So if our world is abundant and our lives are abundant and we start from a paradigm of abundance, then how does our life change? And it's not just that it makes our life easier. For example, we might have an abundance of choice and we might feel overwhelmed by this abundance of choice. So think of the past when you had to decide what you were going to do with your life. As a boy, you would just do what your father did. As a girl, you would just do what your mother did, which was mostly being a housewife or working in the home. Now you can choose what to do with your life. If you go to study, you would come to a university and there'd be 600 choices of studies that you could do. Or think about dating and finding somebody. In the old days, for example, in the time of my grandmother, you would go to the dance after the harvest festival and my grandmother would have danced with maybe five different men that lived in the village and she would try them out one by one and one smelled really nice, so she ends up in the haystack with him and she becomes pregnant and then they get married and then that's your partner. And of course nowadays you go on the dating site and there's five million people that you could date. And you know, as a guy you swipe right on everything, as a woman you swipe left on everything. But you know, in the end, how are you going to make that choice? And so it seems that an abundance of choice is actually more difficult for us. And also because it makes us feel that we're going to miss out. There's the famous FOMO, the fear of missing out, which is the fear that whatever choice you make, there's something out there which is a better choice, which you could have taken. And so if we have a world of abundant choices, what kind of strategies can we use to choose well, to make choices that we feel happy about? If we have an abundance of choices, how then do we choose well? And we have to change strategy. There's a strategy that works when we have a scarcity of choices. And there's a strategy that works when we have an abundance of choices. And these strategies are not the same. So if you have a scarcity of choice, you can just use trial and error. Okay? If you're trying out different people to dance with and you're going to end up with one of them for the rest of your life, then just try all five of them out. If you have to try five courses of study or five books, you can look into them and see if you like them. But what works with five doesn't work with 500 or 5,000 or 5 million. If you go onto a streaming service and there's 35 million songs, how are you going to choose a song? Right? In the old days, you would just go through your record collection or through your CD collection and it was limited. You would choose one of the things that you had. But now the choice is almost limitless. And so there is a fundamental mistake that we make when we choose from a position of scarcity. And it's the mistake of choosing with trial and error. And so imagine if you're choosing from five million. Now, let's say that you're hiring somebody to do a job for you and you have 10 candidates. And the 10 candidates, you can try them out. You can use your trial and error strategy and you can find the best candidate for the job. And that's fine. Now let's say that you have a thousand candidates and you still think there is one best candidate. That's the thinking mistake. There is no one best candidate. When you had 10, one was the best, but that is actually 10% of the candidates, which means that if you have a thousand, maybe 10% of those thousand would be the best candidate. And there would be a hundred best candidates. And we think there is always one optimal, there is always one top position, but that's not true. If you have the hundred best candidates for the job, you won't be able to tell which one is better. If you have the hundred best songs out of a selection, you won't be able to tell that one is better than the other one. It's a numbers game. When the number is very small, we think we choose the best one, but in fact, we choose the top 10%. And that same rule applies when the number is a lot larger. So if you have an abundance of choice, don't worry so much. Just make sure you choose the top 10% and then you will have made the best choice possible. You choose the top 10% of studies, you will have a great study at university. The top 10% of wines, it'll be a great wine. 
the top 10% of holiday destinations, it'll be a great holiday destination. You could go to Italy, you could go to Spain, you could go to Bali. It doesn't matter. There's not one that's better than the other. And that also reduces your fear of missing out. There is not one top solution which was the best one. So the strategy changes. You can't try them all out. Just make sure you're in the right ballpark, that you have the right top 10%. Thank <laughs> you.